So let's get right to the origin of the matter. Well, hey, where you been, dudes? I've been here all the time. What do you mean you went to watch some of them other boys? <laughs> well, you might. But uh, today we've got something uh, probably worth coming here for. Yeah. Although you might not think so. Some old amp from some obsolete company, some people would tell me. Why do you want one of them? They're too heavy, man. They, uh, they're crap. There's no IRs in them. There's, you, you, you've heard it a thousand times, haven't you? You know, all those arguments against the actual origin of the sound. I mean, quite incredible, really. But think back a moment. This was a Marshall 20 watt amp. And it, it's a while old. I don't know exactly how long. I think this one, uh, what's a quick look while I'm here? 03 2019. Well, that's not bad. It's about five years old then, or just over. Yeah, yeah, five years old. It's like new, this one. And I bought it second hand actually, but I did buy it, so it's not a sponsored review in any way. So Tony, why are you reviewing an old 20 watt amp that nobody wants? They'll tell you. <laughs> well, they would tell you that, wouldn't they? Especially the guys that make them other things, you know, the simulators. But here we are, and what we're going to do in this video, this is part one of a two-part video extravaganza, <laughs> that's a great word, into uh, the Marshall origin and what you can do with it. Well, most people know that basically this is a, a one-channel amp. It's 20 watts, give or take, I think, on this one. Let's have a look. I've got some stuff on the screen down here. You can't see it, but don't worry. It says down there, combining retro looks with a contemporary twist on the classic Marshall tone. Yeah, I don't want to twist on the Marshall tone though, do I? I want the Marshall tone. Well, maybe some enhancement. Is it enhanced? Well, we'll find out. Anyway, then it says the origin caters for players in search of cleaner sounds. Well, I can tell you now, man, that isn't me. I don't know. What is a cleaner sound? <laughs> some people love the cleaner tones. Well, they might buy a Fender. Marshall wasn't particularly known for its cleaner sounds or tones. So maybe this is their answer to an equivalent of a Fender. Who knows? I don't. I'm just reading what it says down there. It says there, looking to add a little more grit and distortion to your sound. Oh, good. There's something else. <laughs> just use the pull boost feature. The single channel, all valve amps use our power reducing technology. Great. Power stem. This allows you to have high or low power modes without compromising on sound quality, they say. It also makes playing in the bedroom at rehearsal and the stage a breeze. I suppose in the studio too, where we are. Using the tilt control, you see, <laughs> more later. Using the tilt control, you can change the blend of your sound from normal to high treble. Wow. Well, Come back. Sounds familiar. An ideal pedal platform. You can truly create your own sound with origin. It's a single channel amp, really. At the end of the day, that is what it is. Although, yeah, it's got a foot switch on it. Maybe that's for the boost or whatever. I haven't even read the book. It doesn't matter. Let's not worry about that. Now, before we move on to what we're going to be doing, this head brand new is £499. I think you can still buy it. I think. I got this one for about 300 So if you think about that, well, that's pretty cool. And I got this one from uh, Fair Deal Music in the UK. Hello, Gary, as they say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, very helpful guys. They uh, got one in. I called me up and said, Hey, Tony, we've got one at last. I said, Yeah, okay. I'll have it. I made the wife pay. Of course, that's what you do, isn't it? 
Anyway, enough of my tittle-tattle. What we're going to do, first of all, is take a closer look at the chassis and inside. And, uh, yeah, by the time we get to the second video, well, this video is really all about the origin as it is. As you buy it, as you get it. Well, at least as this one is. But by the time we get to the second video, we're going to take this amp and we're going to modify it into something else. Yeah. And I, I, I might as well thank, uh, Head, I think the name Head First. Yeah. In Australia, you'll see that guy around. Because uh, he's got uh, stuff online that uh, allows me to do it. You know, the stuff that I don't really know what to do. With some of it at least. So uh, with no more to do, let's get this chassis out and have a close look and uh, have a real good look at the origin. And I'll play a bit at the end. And then when we get to the second video, uh, I can mix a bit of that audio in with the modified audio of the modified amp. Yeah, so it sounds like a great plan, especially for the sort of money that I paid for this. And you could too. I'm pretty sure that these don't really go for much money. Okay, well, here we are. Let's have a quick look uh, across this darn thing. This is the uh, power transformer. This is the output transformer. I don't see any choke on the top or anything like that. We've got two EL34 Marshall types of tubes. All very simple, this one. <laughs> We've probably got, that's probably a Pi tube, which is a Marshall white uh, labeling. And this is another white labeling job. But in uh, socket one, nearest the input, we've got the red tube, which is either more gain or less noise or something like that. That's what Marshall do. Chassis is exactly what you'd expect to see for a Marshall, even though this amplifier is actually made in Vietnam. In fact, everything I can see on the top of here so far is pretty much what I'd almost expect to see uh, in the UK. The power transformer has a label down there, as you can see it, and that's basically a TXMA 91072-01. Uh, it says here, May 1803. So it's 2018, not 2019, like I said, and it's March. And it says Rush compliance. What more can you ask for on that? Well, you've got the other output uh, transformer. That also is dated May... 1803. Uh, I can't quite read that one, uh, so let's not worry about that. But it is also Roche compliant. These tubes, by the way, just in case I didn't and mention exactly what they are, they're ECC83s, which is par for the course with Marshall. Okay, quick look inside, then we'll get a bit closer. On this side here, you've got the power transformer comes in there, these are switches for on and off and things like that. There's the power in from the back and you'll notice that the, the switch itself is so cleanly cut into the chassis. None of this, uh, you know, gunge that they put around uh, some of these devices. And I'm not talking a Marshall, I'm talking to some of these very expensive amplifiers and simulators that ought to know better. Okay, down here are the two uh, power tubes. You can see them down there. You'll see these big fat type of what they call cement resistors all lifted off the board. And once again, you don't see that very often except on Marshall, where Marshall have, in effect, lifted these off to stop the board getting damaged. Uh, there are so many, honestly, so many amps that I've seen where these are hard on the board. Nobody seems to care, or maybe they want the units to fail early, so uh, just outside warranty, of course, so <laughs> you can pay. But that's not the case with Marshall. It's the same with the, the resistors, these bigger resistors. They're all lifted off the board, as you can see. Uh, yeah, quite interesting stuff, really. Moving along a bit further, you've got a number of relays there. I don't know what for at this stage, but there are some. You've got a backboard there that handles all the the IO uh, which is all again quite interesting stuff you've got a top board up there with the front controls on where you can control everything but down this section this whole section this is really the preamp section you've got two uh, preamp tubes there 
That one over there is the, uh, the pie tube, I'm pretty sure. And this preamp section is the bit that we're going to be modifying in the next video. But for now, this, this, this is absolutely bog standard from what I can see. Nobody's been inside this one, thankfully. And uh, yeah, it should make a, a great donor board. Well, not a donor board, but a donor amp so that we can turn it into something an awful lot uh, more driven, really, than anything. Uh, that's how I, I think about it. You know, this was designed not to be quite as driven as it's going to be, but, uh, well, you're going to hear it in a, a short while, so you can make your own mind up whether it's great as it is, or later in the second video, whether, you know, uh, the mods were worth doing. Uh, makes a little difference to me with the sort of cost that this costs, so uh, I'm quite happy to look at that. Well, there you go. Once you get in a bit closer, you can see the sort of quality of the device, really. And uh, I'm not so much worried about the uh, the transformer. You know, I mean, some people will talk about, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's a Vietnamese power transformer and a Vietnamese output transformer. That can't be a Marshall. <laughs> well, I beg to differ because, uh, well, the truth is that whether it's made in Vietnam or it's made in England, uh, it's actually the same basic people. Marshall manage the stuff in Vietnam properly, and what you end up with is a, well, a Marshall amp from Vietnam. The only thing it saves, in my opinion, really, is uh, a little bit of cost on the labour and that sort of thing, you know. Uh, if you think about that, pretty obvious. And there are the... Uh, there they are, the 5 watt cement resistors. Oh, very nicely off the board. You can see them. And even these big, fat, standard resistors. Once again, they're all off the board. It's, this is thought behind uh, manufacturing. This is proper thought rather than, you know, just bung them in and it'll do. This is a bit like a studio amp. Uh, probably with different sorts of preamps thrown in if you will uh, i i haven't compared circuits or anything like that but it's pretty obvious from the shape and design of this board that it's uh, extremely similar they all come from the same sort of basic uh, runs i think you can argue with that yeah moving along a bit further what else we got well we've got a couple of links or a few links that go across to that front board there's some more further down that you'll see in a moment like I said you've got these little real look like relays to me them do uh, sprinkled around with capacitors too which over the years will probably end up failing but you could flip the board out and change them no real issue yeah looks like a bit of or that I don't know which one it is but they look that way to me You've got the bottom board down here. Oh, again, all very nice. It's a separate little board. So uh, in the worst situation, yeah, you could pull it out and repair it or try and get a new one out of Marshall. I think they'll sell you one. I don't think there's any... It, well, they might not sell it to you. They'll sell it to your dealer. Okay, well, what I've done this time is try to show you a bit more about this whole section because this is where all that work's going to go on inversion uh, well in, in the second video uh, yeah that should be uh, well quite interesting stuff oh look you've got one of them cement resistors down here I don't remember them on the uh, studios well <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not there and I think there was more of these uh, cement resistors down here I think there was four of them down there on the studio but I could be wrong doesn't really matter just a question of having a look inside here and Seeing what you've got for the money and, you know, as a £300 second user amplifier, I mean, how cheap does it have to get? I mean, this one, to be honest, it's just like brand new. Uh, yeah, closed off chassis ends too. Whereas on the studios, I don't think they have them closed off like that. It's slightly different. The ones that are made in England, that is. Yeah, so that's a quick overview of what's inside. I like the quality on it. It's uh, it's all good. It says here V V1. That might be Vietnam one. For all I know, 
uh, OR12062 V1. Yeah. And that, that number's uh, sort of, yeah, on most boards. On most of the, in fact, I think it's on all the boards. It's a quick look inside. Hope you enjoy looking in here because uh, it does tell you a lot about the equipment. When most people will not show you, they're supposed to be reviewers and they don't really review anything. All they do is plug it in and do well what you could do. Just play it and that's it. That's it. End of story. Gets a bit boring that does after a while. At least in, in this situation, every time I look at a piece of gear... And uh, it's a different piece of gear than I've looked at before. And this is one I have never looked at. Uh, you get another little insight into what's going on with them. And I, I always think that's a good thing. Anyway, let's go, uh, let's go round the, uh, the back. Okay, well, this is just a, a sort of quick overview, quick run through, if you will. Don't want to spend all day on it. Okay, you've got your mains input here. In this case, it's 230 volts. Did Marshall forget it's 240 volts in England? I don't know, but 230 it is, and uh, yeah, it's not changeable, or is it? No, it isn't. It's 230 volts, and you're stuck with 230 volts on this version. You've got a fuse here at the back. Don't forget, if you get a problem, just check this one first, won't you, rather than screwing out the chassis to take a look at the other bits and pieces. It's high pot tested, so that's all good as well. If you're going anywhere on site, people will uh, stop you if you're not high pot tested. Sometimes it will. We've gone along a little bit. We've got the Marshall designed, engineered and quality controlled by Marshall Amplification PLC. Bletchley Milton Keynes. It says made in Vietnam. It's not trying to be something that it isn't. You have to remember that. And here we go. It's 0318 on the serial number. Now, moving on a little bit, we have, we have got an FX loop, which is quite interesting. We've got a send and return on that. And we've got a foot switch next to it. Uh, there it is, with the little white thing on that sort of reminds you that, hey, that's where you put the foot switch, not in one of these down here. If you put them in down there, it's a bit of a problem. Anyway, there's the FX loop. And uh, it's marked up very nicely, send and return. OK, well, there isn't much to talk about on the back of this. That's where the foot switch goes, like I said. We've got a DI out, uh, which is on a, one of the uh, Marshall amps, no matter where it's made. And moving along a bit, we've got all the, uh, uh, yeah, all the things that keep you safe. There's some at the other end as well, like C and we, W-E-E-E. W -E -E -E. And you've also got a Roche there. And these other ones are, well, basically for different countries. We've got an 8 ohm out. An all rate ohm out and a 16 ohm out. Connect speakers before use, obvious. 20 watts out. It's a class 2 wiring and them are your speakers. Thanks very much. And that's all that's round the back. Yeah, the Origin 20H head. So let's go round the front and have a look at the controls. Okay, well, here we are round the front. It looks pretty martially to me. <laughs> about you. Okay, so we got the off and on. We've got a low, a mid and a high power output. We've got the nice, very old-fashioned uh, lamp on there. It proudly displays Origin 20. Well, it would do. <laughs> and we've got these two here for the output, it says. We've got a presence. Everybody knows what that is. And we've got a master. And I guess most people know what that is. Well, here we are in the... Uh, it says equalization section and we've got a treble a mid a bass and this thing called tilt which blends to be more trebly or more normal yeah that's what tilt does lastly we've got this pull boost so it's a gain and if you want more gain you pull it out so if we cranked it out and we did that and we we put everything sort of middly now, some people would turn all them up full, wouldn't they? <laughs> we could crank the master up down here and put the presence probably in the middle or something like that. Yeah, I'd say it'll probably be loud and it might have a bit of distortion even. So, uh, yeah, it should be interesting to say the very least. Well, 
I'm going to go back and uh, put it back in its cab because there's really not much else I can show you about this one. It's, it's all pretty straightforward, really. But uh, I, don't, I don't care what people say. Some people will tell you, oh, you don't want one of them. I've heard them so many times. Um, they criticise, but well, to be honest, most of them probably have never even owned one, let alone tried one. Especially if you're outside the UK as well. They sort of, well, they're more expensive, aren't they, in uh, a lot of countries? Yeah. But here it is in England, uh, and I bought it for, like I said, £300 from Fair Deal Music. Uh, yeah, they're up north of Watford, so they're probably the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> bit like me, I suppose. But there you go. That's life. Let's uh, go and put this back in its case. Well, there it is. The number of the beast. Now, some people will say, like I said earlier, oh, Vietnam, oh, it's terrible. But they're quite happy to take simulators that are made in China and say to you, oh, these are awesome. <laughs> It doesn't add up, does it? You know, the truth is uh, often difficult to swallow. But the fact is that most of those simulators are made in the Far East. Just like this one is. Vietnam. Now, is Vietnam worse or better than China? Probably not. It's probably all a mismatch of what you think it is. But there are one or two things you can conclude about this uh, when you look at it as I have for the first time today. I've never actually looked at an origin before. Fancy that. So let's conclude a few things. Well, you can conclude right off the bat that this Tolex isn't the same, or it doesn't feel the same as the Tolex that's on, say, a studio. This is like sort of smooth with a sort of half a job. <laughs> Half a job pattern. I, it's just a personal view. It just doesn't feel right. And even compared to this one here, this is much better than that one there. For some reason, it just doesn't feel the same. It's maybe one area where the vinyl was sourced over in Vietnam. Could have been, easily. The handle looks identical to all the other handles I've seen on Marshalls. Maybe they're all made in Vietnam. Well, maybe not. Maybe they're all made in the UK. Who knows? Does it really matter? Probably not. But just as an overall opinion, I think everything else at the back looks perfect. I think the back cover is made of uh, MDF, whereas on some of the other amps, I don't think it is MDF. I think the colours of this aren't quite the colours of that. Maybe they're not meant to be. Who knows? But it doesn't look quite right. It just would have been nicer being that colour. Now it is a one channel amp. Now we could argue that that's a one channel amp. Couldn't we? Okay, it's got two inputs. But it isn't two channels. It's really one channel with an extra sort of thingy going on. We'll call it that. <laughs> yeah, so... Well, for its money, it offers a lot for a little. And that's one of the reasons I bought it. But I do have to be honest. I bought it to modify. Me personally, I, I don't really care much about the origin. That's why I never bought it when it came out. And I don't know how long ago it was when it came out. But it, it was at least 2018. <laughs> I doubt this was one of the first. So it's probably been around a fair bit longer than that. A fair bit. Yeah, I'm not even going to research it because it is what it is. But, hard to get past that for 300 quid you can buy a Marshall. And as they say themselves, oh yeah, it's a perfect pedal machine. Now once again, I don't use many pedals. The only two things that I... I like with pedals is a wah pedal and a tube screamer. I've got a number of tube screamers and I've got a number of wah pedals. So one way or another, this could sound quite nice. But I'm going to play without all of those things. Well, at least at first, and then maybe I'll plug a few drivers in it and we'll have a look at how it sounds 
then because it is a review about the origin as it stands as you buy it even the Vietnamese one if I don't even think they make a UK one maybe not maybe they do doesn't matter now do remember my opinion on this product is my just my opinion you might love this amp but mark my words if it's good I'll say so by good could be a subjective term of course I like Marshall gear to start off with whether it's made in Vietnam or not who cares well some people do certainly they do so yeah I can only give it a score of what I think it will be you know my opinion so on this one well I don't like particularly clean amps that doesn't help me but I don't want to be biased towards that I want to say well you know it's got its extra bit of boost it's got that treble thing on it the tilt whatever that is this one doesn't need it yeah and, and things like that so I'll give it bearing in mind it's second hand from 2018 this one stood up very well I'm going to give it about uh, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 now some people say to me what do you mean an 8 out of 10 Tony this is a Marshall well it is but I tell you one of the things that puts me off it's just me I've got Marshalls everywhere in this place is the vinyl I can't get beyond how uh, weird it feels it's like it's like it's been rubbing up against something until all the the uh, the crackles have gone away you can see them but they, they, it's not the same it just isn't the same at all I'm pretty sure of that yeah it isn't just different unless <laughs> unless the owner of this has been like that so I'm gonna get down to do a bit of playing now it's not a massively long review because this is the before review remember that won't you when this thing's been uh, modified I'm sure it'll be well, a snarling monster maybe yeah or not we shall see or maybe it'll never work again I've had my hands on it <laughs> I can see you all out there now having a laugh at oh Tony's gonna blow it up oh, you characters <laughs> anyway it doesn't matter you've been here well you've watched it so far and I appreciate that and uh, you know don't forget to do that sub yeah because you're going to want to watch part two aren't you what if I put it as a private video that's cocked it up hasn't it <laughs> yeah do the sub do the thumbs up thing and uh, you know ring that bell ding ding you've got to do that stuff and then uh, maybe it'll be worthwhile coming back and uh, watching other videos you know because then you get notified don't you I've got something in my eye oh it's an eyeball <laughs> don't forget to visit https colon slash slash tony and if you want to know where my uh, youtube channel is it's tony com. no dot that's simple on the website there's loads of stuff loads of stuff and people visit it all the time there's, you know I, I wouldn't say there's a hundred thousand visitors because this is very uh so it's it's really it's a vertical market that i'm in and uh, but i'm getting sort of seven or eight thousand a month visitors every month so that's a hundred thousand visits a year which is a lot for somebody like me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and plug it in in the other room in the recording room this is more the uh, media room generally but not always as you can see <laughs> we do crank them up in here yeah so that's what I'm going to do put it in the other room I'm going to mic it up none of this DI stuff and you're going to hear it well it might play over some backing track or it might just play a few chords or whatever it does doesn't really matter does it you'll get some examples of the origin 20 watt that I bought for 300 quid and so could you well you could at least in England some of you guys ought to put down below what these things cost assuming you can get them in America uh, it would be nice to know what they are second hand in great condition like this one you know none of the bashed up things and uh, yeah we can do a bit of a well you show me yours and I'll show you mine <laughs> okay well that's it for now hope you've watched this uh, 
little short one and enjoyed it and learned at least something about it. And uh, when I get to the next video, I'll probably uh, modify it in the video. Uh, but it will be probably speeding up a bit, you know, that sort of thing. Then we can get down to hearing an origin after the event as opposed to before the event. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate the head first guy again. I'll say that again because uh, he's the guy uh, who's done all the mods online, you know. Uh, very useful guy. Till next time, here's the plane. Now get out of here.